with me this time, suckers. Mm -hmm. What's up, babe? I don't know why I feel the need to have such aggressive energy. I just think it's funny. We're doing more of a longer teaching video this time instead of a quick one. So this is not a, a live on Facebook. This is going to be a YouTube video. And um, for folks that haven't joined us in a while, this is Lander Red. She is our um, hat ma resident hat maker here at Hats by Grizz. And you saw Grizz kind of pop in and out. He he does that. And um, so Lander Red, is it like cold in the shop today? What do you think? <laughs> no. It's not cold. It's very warm, and I've had a lot of steam in my face already. But um, okay. So, so what, I'll what shut up. Where we're starting at is we've already ironed out the brim, as you can see, and what we're gonna fix, which, as you can see, there is staining. This will all be taken care of either through additional steaming or sanding. But that's not what this video is about. It's just people will see it and be like, "That hat's nasty." It's not. It's also just kind of still wet, so that makes it look worse than it does too. But what we're gonna do is sometimes when you iron to get a good break it'll dip into the hat and you can kind of see around where it's uh yes really into we it. see that and there's also just the top is creased and in bad shape so before we trim we're going to go ahead and get that fixed up okay and this it's looks worse than it is but it's actually fairly simple to fix we're just gonna put this on here let it steam you can see where i've marked the back we're gonna use this block to put it down get the top fixed up and then after that, we'll work on trimming and pencil curling. And we'll go through a couple of hats on this one to really get a good... Okay, so this is going to be a longer, longer video here. Mm -hmm. Usually it takes a little bit to come back up. And this was specifically requested by someone on our Facebook comments who wanted a deeper explanation on pencil curling, how to use the irons, what makes different size curls, which there's a lot of people who are newer who will see people selling uh, pencil curl irons and they'll see they're selling like three different sizes and they think, oh, you have to have different sized irons. Not the case. Uh, the curl more depends on how you hold your wrist when you go and how you angle it. So you, it's a whole thing about people getting into it without the prior knowledge. You can kind of see it starting to seam now. And a lot of a lot of few makers have very high-end irons that create the steam that you need. First of all, we do not have the electrical wiring in our shop to, to run anything that's very that pulls very much juice. Which this hat may end up needing more stiffener, but for now we're gonna just put it back on the block to fix it. It doesn't need to be soft, soft, but it has to get soft enough down here that it will be malleable. Okay. So now that's good. Turn it off before you do it. Have it close. Because you don't want to flip it immediately because then it loses the steam. And it starts to firm back up and can become an issue. So you mash it up. And it is very important to get your marks. Yes, to keep Because when you get working, we she and I can both attest. This is something if you don't, don't keep your marks very easy to lose where you're at. What you can do uh, when you steam it, it can get a little soft, so around the brim you can just take it up and move it back up. And now, normally, later on, if we have to fix the crown, we'll let it sit longer, but for now, it doesn't need to be perfect. You can see, right along the bottom, fix back up. Here, let me do a close-up. Hang on. See, folks? Now we've got that break straight. And we're going to set it flat for another little bit to let it kind of dry again before we start trimming. Because it's better for the brim to be firmer because it's just easier to cut. Because if it's still very soft, you can kind of, as you're trimming, your hand will kind of move down and that changes the angle of the cutter and it can make the brim kind of uneven. Okay. So... It just helps in the long run for it to be a little firmer. And as you can see, there's still kind of a crease in the top. Yes. And like I said, this one is most likely going to need more stiffener. So after you do that, you can do it again and really put your hands on it, put a string down to really tighten it against the block. And really that pull that out. out the yeah. Crease really well. 
And you can even see now that some of the staining on the crown is actually fading as it dries, fading. yes. Because I can already see some comments being like, that hat's nasty. It's a process. Sometimes bodies just, things happen. Yes. And we are starting at an early stage, so, you know, a lot of folks, yeah. when they order a hat body, a lot of times it will already come to them in this stage right here. Yeah. And... So we start at an earlier stage. So now you can see as you pick it up, it's got enough uh, structure that it will stay mostly flat as you hold it uh, vertically. Horizontally. Yes. Yes. Anyway. So. Oh, look, who is that? Yes. My, the camera's on. <laughs> Keep on, Molly. Keep and on. as you we were saying, we have this uh, chalk mark right here, and that marks the back of the hat. So whenever you put it back on the block, you take this side where there's the line coming down from the R, and you match it up there to keep it. So now, we're not going to put it all the way back down for trimming, it just needs to be firm. Firmly on it. Which, this one can go all the way down because I just did it, so it's wanting to fit on there. But sometimes putting it all the way down can kind of warp the brim and make it an issue. A little wonky. But this should be fine. Now, for the most part, we all of our styles have a set brim length that it has to meet. But usually, unless we're doing a dress hat that has like a two and seven eighths or shorter brim, we try to get as much as we can out of it because sometimes you can get more brim depending on it. So this is a down under. Um, that's one where I believe the standard brim size is three and a half, but we're gonna see if we can get a little higher than that. And what you want to do is you want to measure around and find the shortest part and then go from there which this is the shortest side over here and let me get a as shot you can at see, this angle it still just barely goes over three and three quarters so we're going to go ahead and just go with three and a half okay because you don't want to run it right up to the edge do you when you're cutting no eh, sometimes it happens that way but you don't want to get in that habit because it can start causing issues if you fly a little too close to the sun and then all of a sudden you're your running wings off the melt. Edge. <laughs> you're running off the edge you're having all kinds of issues put your blade in here, uh, your ruler right against the blade, to measure right here. And we're going to go to three and a half. And on ours, we do not just gauge by that. We, we actually measure every time to make sure that it hasn't slipped. It's just little tricks that you learn to teach yourself just to keep from we're having a costly mistake. Set the cutter right over the brim. You're going to press down to really get into the felt and you're going to start going around. And you want to make sure that the center part is firmly against it. It's easy to kind of lead here, but that can make it angle weird. You just want to slowly go around. And like we said, this rim is still a little soft, so it makes it a little harder to go around. So you just have to be really careful. You can see we've had an issue where it's gone back up into this. It's really easy to fix. Part where your uh, blade goes in, you can open it up and you sw simply switch directions. So then what you do is you go back to this side. You'll make sure this part is on the other side of the blade. Go back in and there. Voila! 
and we'll just have to sand a little extra there where it's a little off but and that may seem like a bigger deal when you're first doing it like oh no i've messed up horribly but what it's really done is just angled back up into it so it wasn't messing with the actual shape yes <laughs> and this is like the ideal amount you want left after you trim So what we do next is we take sandpaper and go all the way around to kind of soften the edges because it looks a little better when you're uh, testifying. And what I like to do sometimes is you can see there's a little bit of an edge and I like to carefully go in and just lightly trim it. Kind of just feather it out. Now you can see whatever little bumps there were are out of there. Now, do you use a finer or a rougher grit at this we point? We use a finer grit. This grit is 220. Okay. The finer grit just gives it that smooth edge without really uh, roughing up the felt. Okay. So you just start. You really want to make sure you have a good pinch on the edge because that's the part you're really focusing on. Uh, And you can see with how much it lightens uh, when you've gotten back to where you started. And you can see it's a little softer on the edge. You don't want to go too much into it, but just enough to make it a little uh, blunter. Okay. So now what we're going to do is uh, clear out this real quick. And I'm going to go grab a stand. So before we pencil curl, we want to get the stand that's going to sit on while the dry set up because it keeps it off of a flat surface so the entire pencil curl area dries evenly. So we'll take this, put it on there. And this one is going to be 24, which means we blocked it. I believe we blocked it on the 24 and an eighth, and we're going to bump it up. So we're going to grab a 24 and eighth over here if we can find it. If not, a 24 will work at least for now. I'm gonna go ahead and use this one. So a lot of the final adjustment of size is done a little bit later in the process? Yeah, because now we just get the pencil curl done and this allows us, if it needs more stiffener to do that, and by then it will hold shape better as you work on it. And these blocks are used just to help it keep it shape and keep it size because sometimes as they dry or sit, they want to shrink because that's just how the fibers work. So keeping them on the blocks helps it uh, keep it shape. So now we're gonna come over here and we need to have our edge visibly wet all the way around to prevent it from burning as you pencil curl. Mm -hmm. Now this is with the, the our traditional heat set pencil curl. You can do a... Uh, like a hand one you can do it um just basically if you're if you already had a wired brim or if you were ri ribbon binding your brim first you could just do a decorative one and you could do it without heat but ours is a functional so it needs to have the heat you can see it's starting to saturate all the way around but it doesn't necessarily need to be fully saturated uh-huh just have to make sure you've gone around a couple of times to make sure it's 
what we also do is we have these old hats here that are beat up for a very specific reason. We take uh, this side and get it wet. And we're going to take our first uh, pencil curl iron and run it around this one to make sure there's no debris from any other hats that have been there. It also cools down the iron a bit so it doesn't want to scorch the hat. You can kind of see there it had some scorch marks as well yes. as uh, things. I'm going to run it over a few more times. I need to lessen the heat on the irons. And now, what you need to do is you angle your, uh, oh gosh, that's scorching. We need to uh, lessen the heat. So, this one already had some scorching troubles, so I guess it's just the nature of it. Mm -hmm. And what do you do um, when, when, you, when you have a scorch spot that's small? What do you do to it? Sandpaper. Uh, kind of Is it better to let it dry first and sand it, or to sand it Sometimes immediately? It dries as it is immediately, so it's better to just take it and go right in. So, because you were moving quickly and very observant, it did not go deep? Okay, it didn't go deep, and it's not all the way around, so it's very easy to fix. Because it can be scary when it happens, but if you stop and fix it, like, see right there, it's yes. completely coming out already. And also, if you have a good sense of smell, that's a you key smell it to, first. you'll smell it before you ever see it scorching. Because burning hair is a very noticeable smell. So, this is very important to see in learning that... And you can see up where the uh, iron kind of pinched on it that it uh, got a little bit of a deeper one, so you just have to sand a little harder. Learning and creating is not about not making any mistakes, but it's about knowing what to do if you make a mistake and you know, how to prevent them to the least, but also how to correct them. Because life does not come without mistakes. And I'm gonna have to move that uh, iron out the problem is it's directly over the fire, uh -huh. and it was getting a little too hot, so even that wasn't enough to really cool it down. And like we said, things happen and you just have to work on it. Because there was a time we were afraid to show like this on camera, because we were like, what do people see it and think we're bad hat makers? But this is not necessarily a mark on your skill, it's just... Accidents. This happens, yes. It's just like... Uh, an example I recently saw a hat maker, I mean a knife maker whose knife slipped out of his tongs and went flying across the room and so he taught you know, the he was able to take it into a, a discussion now of safety you can safety. see we've got it mostly out and it's in much better shape and if there's still after it dries if there's still any you can go back and sand it again but for now we're probably going to leave it at this okay So as long as you're paying attention and you stop and think about what can I do to make sure that doesn't happen again, what I'm going to do is move that one over. I'm going to use this one that's further off the heat so it's less likely to be as scorching. And I'm going to go ahead and put more water on it this time to really help prevent any uh, more scorching. One yes, because ahead. with the uh, pencil curl you cannot have an ironing cloth it just by the nature of it. Yeah. So now you can see it's a lot of water going around, especially where it's saturating. 
which I may actually let it saturate a little bit and do another round just to make sure because I'm not entirely sure how hot that one's going to be. Okay. You can really see along the edge, even though it's not all saturated like this, there's a lot more dark in color. So here we go again. This one is in much better shape, but I'm going to go ahead and wet this one again and quickly run it over just to double check. And normally you don't have, as long as your irons don't get too hot in the first place, you don't have to do all this extra stuff. It's just once you see that they are getting too hot, you then you have to, take, to cool, take measures to pull them back down. And the extra sounds it made is just because it was wetter. So okay. it has more popping, but it's not that it's inherently hotter. So we'll go around the first time to really set in the pencil curl, and then we'll go around a second time while it's without taking it off, just to really get it even all the way around. And like I said, it's mostly about angling your wrist inward to get the deepness that you want. And if you want to kind of lessen it, you angle it back out like that, and we'll just lightly go around at the same angle. And here we're going to deepen it a little bit so we angle back in. So as you go, you're kind of observing what's right ahead of you, how deep it needs to be and all. And usually around the end is when the heat starts to lessen, so you have to angle a little more. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go in with our hands and hand pinch it down to give it that extra definition. And this is where it really helps it stay even. But you don't want to fold it against itself, correct? You're just bending it over. Yeah, your thumb will kind of touch the hat before because you'll put your thumb over like this and it touches there before it touches the hat. Now, if someone was wanting to practice, um, can they say if they were if they have a, a hat they're practicing a pencil curl on, can they go back, iron it out, and do it again? Absolutely, and I've done it several times because sometimes your pencil curl is so uneven you're just like I'm gonna start over. So you would take a flat iron, and that time you can use a uh, ironing cloth, and you would simply press it out as much as you can with your fingers, put the cloth over, and start ironing out around, and you can start over. Now, if someone wants a really super deep curl, what do you do? You have to start when you're curling it with the iron, and you have to really angle inward with your wrist towards the hat, and just really work. You press down as you're doing it to really get it set in. You can see here, this section is a little deeper curled than the rest, so you'll kind of take your thumb and roll it out. So when, as you're going around, you're not just pushing in, you're pulling it back out if it's too deep. Yeah, you're paying attention to how even it is all the way around. And that's how you get a very deep, consistent, beautiful curl. It's just paying attention to what side needs what. 
and there Double. you have it. Look at that. So that's the first one down. And you can see where there was a scorch mark. When it got wet, it kind of makes it look darker, which it makes the entire hat look darker. So it's uh -huh. not that it's suddenly scorched again. So after it's dry, you can remove it and do any final touch-ups of any spots. Yeah, we. this hat is cursed because it got scorched again. <laughs> Uh, okay, so at this point we are at 25 minutes. I'm going to stop this video and you have done a wonderful job. Thank you Landa Red for teaching us. So, get the hell out of here.